Tyler from Aspire Sports. Today's video, I'm going to give you my running back sleepers heading into the 2021 fantasy football draft. These are guys that are going later in your drafts. Guys that have roles that will be good week to week. Not a guy like Tony Pollard that you have to rely on an injury to Ezekiel Elliott for him to really have value for you. These are guys that will have solid value throughout the weeks. And if the guy in front of them gets hurt, it's only going to be more valuable for them. So with that being said, if you find yourself enjoying this content at any part in the video, do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. Really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We post new content daily that will help you win your fantasy football leagues. So with that being said, let's get in the video. The first player, AJ Dillon. AJ Dillon is currently being drafted as running back number 38 in fantasy football around guys like Zach Moss, Kenyon Drake, and David Johnson. And personally, I'd rather have AJ Dillon over all of those guys. AJ Dillon plays on the league's best offense in terms of scoring last year, where the Green Bay Packers were first in scoring offense. This is going to lead to plenty of opportunities for him this upcoming season to see scoring opportunities. Last year, we have Jamal Williams, who's no longer with the team, but Jamal Williams last year played on over 400 snaps for this team. I expect majority of those snaps to now go to A.J. Dillon, especially the rushing snaps, the rushing attempts, is where he's going to see a lot of work. Also, I was a little bit concerned about his receiving ability, but after this past preseason game, he saw two catches, I believe, for 18 yards. So he's proving, they're proving, that he's competent as a receiver out of the backfield. This is also a guy that's very, very, very good at yards after contact. In college, he had over 1,600 rushing yards. 1,100 yards came after the contact, came after contact. Also in preseason, and yes, it's a very small sample size, but in preseason, he has 28 rushing yards. 21 of them came after contact. So a guy that's averaging five yards per carry of yards after contact currently. Yes, once again, it is preseason, but still, he's an absolute freak when you look at him. He's, his BMI score was in the 90th percentile. His speed score, 97th percentile. Burst score, 97th percentile. So he's an athlete. His comparable is Steven Jackson. A lot of things to like from A.J. Dillon on one of the league's best offense with one of the league's best quarterbacks. A.J. Dillon should be drafted over all of those guys. Even a guy like Leonard Fournette is currently going ahead of A.J. Dillon. Draft A.J. Dillon, and thank me later. The second running back, Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards is currently being drafted as running back number 42 in fantasy football, and like A.J. Dillon, he's just a very good pure running back. Like A.J. Dillon, he's also very good at yards after contact. Last year, he averaged 3.28 yards after contact per carry, which was the 11th best mark in the NFL amongst all running backs. So a guy that's very good at fighting through your arm tacklers and finishing runs, which you like to see in these guys. J.K. Dobbins did finish ahead of him, but this past week we did have Gus Edwards outsnap J.K. Dobbins 10-8. to 8. Once again, it's only preseason. I expect J.K. Dobbins to be the favorite in this backfield, but I do think it's a closer split than what people want to admit. I think it's going to be a 60-40, possibly 55-45 type of split with these two guys, which... Doesn't bode well for J.K. Dobbins, but bodes well for Gus Edwards, especially in the case that something happens to J.K. Dobbins and he has to miss time. Gus Edwards would step in there with massive potential. But regardless, if nothing even happens to J.K. Dobbins, this is still a guy that's going to be involved, a guy that you would want to play in games that they're heavily favored to win because he's going to see more work. Just a guy that you want to have on your team this late that plays a, on a very good team projected to win 12 games this upcoming season. So Gus Edwards would be my second running back. The third running back, J.D. McKissick. J.D. McKissick is currently being drafted as running back number 48 in fantasy football. And this was a guy who last year finished as a top 25 back in fantasy football, largely due to his 106 targets, which led the running back position in targets. So far in the preseason, though, we have him playing on third downs. He's playing third downs once again. Antonio Gibson is not playing those downs, which is going to lead him to play the two-minute offense as well. That hurts Antonio Gibson a little bit. And this is what I've been talking about with Antonio Gibson. I absolutely love him as a talent, but you're going to have J.D. McKissick, who's going to limit his upside a little bit due to the receiving work that J.D. McKissick is going to see. This is a guy that's going to have solid week-to-week -week value, especially in weeks that... 
Washington football team are going to be the underdogs is where I would play J.D. McKissick and feel decent about that, especially during the bye weeks. Obviously, there's a lot of other running backs I would want out there, but that's a guy that's going to give you solid floor, and we know what his role is week to week. And if something happens to Antonio Gibson, it's not like he's going to see a whole lot more work, but he's definitely going to see more receptions and a little bit more carries, which boosts him up a little bit. But just a guy that's going to be safe for you week in and week out. You know his role, and especially, like I said, in the games that they're going to be underdogs is where you can really utilize J.D. McKissick. So J.D. McKissick, third running back. The fourth running back, Giovanni Bernard. And this is especially true in PPR leagues and standard. I, will, I don't really have a whole lot of interest in him, but in your PPR leagues, 100%. This is a guy that I've been talking about for, for the past month now, a lot, because he's going to be this team's pass catching specialist. And you already had Bruce Arians basically come out the other day and say he's going to be heavily involved in this offense, specifically his pass catching role where He's by far the best pass catcher on this team in terms of the running backs, by far. And by far the best in pass pro, where you have two guys in Bruce Arians and Tom Brady that have a very short leash for guys who don't do their jobs. Giovanni Bernard will do his job where the other guys didn't do him last year. And that's why they went out and brought him in. So he's going to be the guy that's going to be there in third downs. He's also going to see the two-minute offense. This is a team that last year passed the ball the, sec the six most times in the NFL, and Tom Brady was second in the NFL last year in passing attempts. They're going to throw the ball a lot. He's going to be the James White of this offense. It's a different offense, but still is going to be that James White style of guy for Tom Brady, so go out and draft him. This is a team that last year, the running backs, even though they were abysmal, abysmal in the receiving abilities, saw nearly 120 targets, so... Giovanni Bernard can see 70 plus targets would not surprise me at all. So draft Giovanni Bernard in your PPR leagues. The fifth running back on the list, James White. He's currently being drafted as running back number 59 in fantasy football. And this is a guy who last year saw 62 targets in 14 games on a pretty bad offense in New England. This offense should be much better this upcoming season with Johnny Smith, Hunter Henry, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, possibility of Mac Jones playing for this team, Cam Newton another year in this offense. This offense should be much improved this upcoming season, and he's really the only back, in my opinion, that has a defined role on this offense. Damian Harris looks like he's going to be the starting running back, but... Does he continue to be the starting running back for the whole season when you have Stevenson, who's looking pretty good? Yes, Stevenson's going not against the best competition, but you have to kind of wonder, like, man, he's looking pretty good. So, But James White should have his role for the whole season. He'll be the pass catcher. He'll be the two-minute offense type of guy, like the other guys I just talked about. And that gives him a very safe floor, especially in your PPR leagues. To be able to plug and play him on bye weeks or crucial situations where you need somebody to play. Yes, he might not have the ceiling that other guys have, especially if the starting running backs get hurt. But he's a guy who has a very safe floor and should see plenty of receptions this upcoming season. Last year, saw 62 and 14 games on a bad team. He should see more than that. So, James White, the last guy. Well, actually, there's one more bonus guy here. And I, I just want to talk about him real quick. And that's going to be Michael Carter. And Michael Carter, the bonus guy that I just want to talk about, because what's going to happen with Michael Carter, he's going to severely drop in your drafts, severely drop. His ADP is going to absolutely fall right now because you have Tevin Coleman, anti Johnson playing ahead of Michael Carter. Michael Carter did not look good in his first preseason game, but this past week he did look good. He's much better than Ty Johnson, and Tevin Coleman. Let me just say that right now. He's much, much better as a football player than Ty Johnson and Tevin Coleman. He's going to start at some point in the season. So buy the dip now when he's starting to absolutely plummet in ADP, and he's going to be a really good value pick for you this upcoming season because he's going to start for this team. And I know you might say it's the Jets. They're going to suck. And once again, I got to say, that's the stigma about the Jets. The Jets are actually going to be a much better football team this year than they were last year. Zach Wilson is looking pretty good. You have Corey Davis. This offensive line is getting better. So this team is going to actually be a decent football team. They're still not going to win a whole lot of games, but they're going to be much better, especially in terms of fantasy football production for you than the years past. So draft Michael Carter. Once he absolutely just starts falling, falling, you'll see it in the coming days here. His draft stock is going to plummet, and that's when you buy because he's the best running back on this team. He's the best running back, so draft him. With that being said, 
Thank you for watching the content. If you, if, well, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.